and economic theory of contracts. That's what we're going to talk about today in this lecture video. So this will actually be the first part of a series of a handful of videos addressing an economic theory of contracts. So today we're going to address why do we have contracts and what promises should be enforced. And next time uh, we will get into what should be the remedy for breaking enforceable contracts. To understand why we have contracts, let's consider the following game between or scenario between Susie and Bobby. Susie has an investment opportunity, but no money. Bobby has money, but no investment opportunities. If Bobby gives Susie $100, she can invest it and earn an additional $100. So Bobby has two choices. Bobby can invest the money, give it to Susie, or he can choose not to invest. Once Susie has the money, she has two choices. She can cooperate by actually following through with the investment agreement, or she can appropriate, which means she actually takes the money and runs. If they cooperate, then they both earn $50. So the first number is for Bobby, the second number is for Susie. So they both get a $50 return if they cooperate, and Bobby gives the money to Susie, and then Susie goes ahead and actually follows through with the investment and then splits the returns. They'll both get 50-50. However, Susie also has the choice or the opportunity to appropriate, in which case Bobby loses $100 and Susie gets a $200 return. Bobby, if he chooses not to invest, he'll get nothing and Susie will get nothing. Neither of them get a return. Once Bobby gives the money to Susie, she has a choice between earning $50 or $200. You can see that the best thing for her, once she has the money, is to go ahead and take the money and run to appropriate. And so Bobby, he's probably a smart guy. Knowing this, what is he going to do? Well, he has a choice really between a negative, negative 100 or zero. So he's going to choose not to invest. That's the safest route to go. We can change this game, this scenario, by writing a contract. So let's suppose that Bobby and Susie sign a contract where if Susie runs off with the money, she'll have to give Bobby the promised $150 plus, both have to pay $25 of court fees. And so Bobby once again has the choice to invest where he gives the money to Susie or not to invest. Once Susie has the money, she can cooperate or she can appropriate. If she cooperates, then they both get that 50-50 return. If she appropriates, then they're both going to end up netting $25. And so, again, if she appropriates, they have this contract that's going to force Susie to pay Bobby the promised money. Plus, they both have to subtract out the $25 court fees. So we end up with $25.25. Again, if Bobby doesn't invest, then they both get zero. Once Bobby gives that money to Susie, what's Susie's incentive? She has the choice to cooperate and get $50 or to appropriate and get $25. So now she has the incentive to cooperate and get $50. That really makes it so that Bobby's choices are if he invests, he knows Susie has the incentive to follow through with this, he gets $50. If he doesn't invest, he gets zero. And so you can see now Bobby is better off if he cooperates. So why do we have contracts? So far, as we've talked about exchange, we haven't worried about some of the details of trade. And one of those details that we really haven't worried about is it taking time. A lot of transactions happen at once. You hand me a check for $5,000, I hand you the keys to my car. There might be search costs and bargaining costs, but there's no real enforcement costs because the exchange takes place instantaneously. Some transactions, however, take time. A simple example would be you want to fly to New York. Should you pay as you get on the airplane? What if the plane never takes off? You could pay as you're getting off, but can the airline trust you that you're going to pay? In reality, what you actually do is you pay weeks in advance. You're actually purchasing a promise to fly you to New York. Consider another scenario. You want to hire someone to build you a house. Again, how do you work this out? Do you pay up front? Do you pay when it's finished? Do you pay throughout? What do you do if there's a significant change in material prices? What's going to happen then? A contract is a promise, and the purpose of contracts is to enable trade when transactions aren't concluded immediately, when they take time. Let's turn to the question, what promises should be enforced? 
there's two different theories that we can use to answer this question. Traditionally, the bargaining theory of contracts was used to answer this question, what promises should be enforced? We will first look at the bargaining theory of contracts, and then we're going to look at the economic theory of contracts. The bargaining theory of contracts was developed in the late 1800s and early 1900s. The bargaining theory of contracts says a promise should be enforced when given as part of a bargain. Bargains have three elements. An offer, which is a proposal for exchange of something for a promise. Acceptance, which is agreement to the proposed exchange. And consideration, what one party, the promisee, gives to another to induce the promise. Bargaining theory says that a promise is not enforceable unless it is part of a bargain. It must contain all three elements. Under the bargaining theory, the contract becomes enforceable once consideration is given. So again, the three elements that must be there are offer and acceptance and consideration. Now let's turn to three examples that are actually given in your textbook. And in each of these, let's ask, is it enforceable under bargaining theory? The first example is the rich uncle of a struggling college student learns at the graduation party that his nephew graduated with honors. Swept away by good feeling, the uncle promises the nephew a trip around the world. Later, the uncle reneges on his promise. The student sues his uncle, asking the court to compel the uncle to pay for a trip around the world. So is this enforceable? And you can see that there was an offer made to fly the student around the world. You can see that the student accepted it. But what was the consideration that was given? Nothing was given to induce this promise, so it is not enforceable. Okay, the second example. One neighbor offers to sell a used car to another for $1,000. The buyer gives the money to the seller, and the seller gives the car keys to the buyer. To her great surprise, the buyer discovers that the keys fit the rusting Chevrolet in the backyard, not the shiny Cadillac in the driveway. The seller is equally surprised to learn that the buyer expected the Cadillac. The buyer asks the court to order the seller to turn over the Cadillac. Is this enforceable? It's not enforceable under bargaining theory. There is no meeting of the minds. There really was no offer and no acceptance because of the communication failure. So this is not enforceable. Okay, third example. A farmer in response to a magazine ad for a sure means to kill grasshoppers mails $25 and receives in the mail two wooden blocks with the instructions place grasshopper on block A and smash with block B. The buyer asks the court to require the seller to return the $25 and pay $500 in punitive damages. You might be surprised, under bargaining theory of contracts, all three elements are present. There is an offer, there's an acceptance, and $25 payment was given as consideration. So under bargaining theory, the contract is enforceable. In an economic theory of contracts, we ask the question, for efficiency, what contracts should be enforced? In the economic theory of contracts, we're going to enforce any contracts that are actually efficient. Efficiency generally requires enforcing a promise if both parties wanted it to be enforced when it was made. In other words, when the contract represents a Pareto improvement. A Pareto improvement makes one party better off without making another worse off. A promise is efficient if it brings about a Pareto improvement. Consider the agency game with Bobby and Susie. Both parties wanted the promise to be enforced at the outset. Otherwise, the exchange is not likely. Notice that this is not the same thing as wanting it enforced after the promise is made. When we ask the question, is this contract enforceable under the economic theory of contracts, we want to step back to that point when the contract was being signed. At that point, did both parties actually want it being enforced? Let's go through these three examples now and once again ask, is this enforceable under the economic theory of contracts? Again, the first example, the rich uncle of a struggling college student learns at the graduation party that his nephew graduated with honors. Swept away by good feeling, the uncle promises the nephew a trip around the world. Later, the uncle reneges on his promise. The student sues his uncle, asking the court to compel the uncle to pay for a trip around the world. Is this contract enforceable under the economic theory of contracts? Yes. If you ask the question, at the time the contract was entered into, did they both want it enforced? The answer to that question is yes. 
Recall that under the bargaining theory, this was not enforceable because it lacked consideration. It lacked something given for the promise. But under the economic theory of contracts, it is enforceable because they both want it enforced at the time it is being signed. Example two, one neighbor offers to sell a used car to another for $1,000. The buyer gives the money to the seller and the seller gives the car keys to the buyer. To her great surprise, the buyer discovers that the keys fit the resting Chevrolet in the backyard, not the shiny Cadillac in the driveway. The seller is equally surprised to learn that the buyer expected the Cadillac. The buyer asks the court to order the seller to turn over the Cadillac. Is this enforceable under the economic theory of contracts? No, if they really had understood what was being promised, the parties would not have wanted it enforced when they entered into the contract. Okay, the final example. A farmer, in response to a magazine ad for a sure means to kill grasshoppers, mails $25 and receives in the mail two wooden blocks with the instructions, place grasshopper on block A and smash it with block B. The buyer asks the court to require the seller to return the $25 and pay $500 in punitive damages. Is this enforceable under the economic theory of contracts? Question here really is, did both parties really want it enforced at the outset? Not really. Consistent with the economic theory of contracts, modern courts would not enforce this. Recall that all three elements of a bargain are present, so under the bargaining theory the contract is enforceable, but it is not enforceable under the economic theory of contracts because it's not efficient. Both parties didn't really want this enforced at the outset. Today we've talked about why we have contracts and what contracts should be enforced. Next time we'll address the question, what should be the remedy for breaking enforceable promises?